welcome back. Uh, it's been around a week. Lost a little on top. Grew a little on the sides. Uh, and uh, we are going to continue what we started last week, which was how to use Neverwinter Nights as a uh, virtual tabletop. Uh, it does work. It works extremely well. I've done it, and I ran a two-year campaign using it. And I'd like to share some of the fun that I had with you because, well, despite what everyone wants to think, the pandemic is still here and we're all still playing on the line a lot. And this really is a very fun way to kind of do it. So uh, let's go ahead, uh, jump right into uh, part two. Uh, we're going to explore some more, some more advanced functions. We're going to learn how to do basic things like how to build a conversation file so that when you just talk to an NPC, uh, he says something back to you, uh, either just a one-line little blurb at you, or has actually kicks back and has a little conversation with you in a dialogue window. So uh, we'll also take a look at how to set up a basic quest, how to uh, uh, lock doors and create items so that you can unlock the doors. Just basic stuff. So let's go ahead, hop into the... Uh, Hop into the Neverwinter Nights tool set and let's get started on some slightly more advanced uh, tool set functions. Before we start looking back into the tool set, I just want to show you a few changes I made. First of all, uh, I found the uh, starting point a little claustrophobic with that front door closed, so as you can see, I opened it. I should probably show you how to do that in the tool set. We will show you how to do that in the tool set. As you can see, I have changed out my starting character. This is the first level dwarf fighter. Uh, I've also thrown some dangerous spots on the map. So I guess I should probably go ahead and equip armed armor. Uh, so, uh, let me show you around a little because I built some more areas on the map using the same exact basic building skill. Uh, that we talked about in the last video. Uh, I honestly don't expect you to sit and watch me build the whole thing, but I would like to show you the areas that are in place and tell you a little about what my plans are for those areas. So, here's the Western Road. There is an encounter here. We're going to use some scripting to put some thugs here unloading this wagon. The dead body of the carter is going to be... Okay, well that's not supposed... Okay, that's the dead carter. Now we are going to show you how to use scripting so that when he spawns, he spawns in as a corpse. Uh, but for the time being, he's actually standing there and he's hostile. You can tell by the red shade that he's hostile. If I got too close to him, he would attack me which is not what we're doing. We're not here to play video games. So we're just going to ignore him unless he sees us. Uh, anyway, uh, let's keep moving down the road. We're going to put in a scalable encounter, uh, just a, a basic, like, I don't know, a deal or something over here. It'll give us a chance to talk a little bit about factions. Uh, and we get to the crossroads here. South across the Neverwinter River, north to uh, Waterdeep. Down here, if you look closely, if you have good eyes, you'll see that there is a sunken, you can also see it from the, cave, the cliffs up here, there's a sunken caravan wagon. Uh, there's also a cave here players entering the cave will probably be expecting a monster. That's not what they're going to find there. They're going to find a hermit. Uh, the cave is actually built in the trans area transition. It's set up. Uh, oh, I should probably put some fire. I have like a bed roll and a couple of boxes in here. But there's going to be an old hermit living in here. He might be persuaded to tell the players a little about what he saw when the, uh, he saw the, the, uh, the cart rolled into the into the uh, ocean. Either way, eventually they will find themselves, they'll find their way to this stream, which actually 
actually is a hidden entrance to the bandit's lair, which is here. Okay. As you can see, there's a big pile of wreckage here, stuff that the bandits had discarded. They didn't want to carry everything back to their base, just the stuff of value, along with a great big pile of corpses. Now, this part of the forest is cursed. Uh, the players have no way of knowing this, of course, but any corpse which is buried face down in this part of the forest uh, is going to be animated and turned into a slave of an evil dark force that lives deeper in the forest. Which obviously is the first time. Oh! Oh no! Okay. Oh, he didn't spawn. I'm gonna have to work on that. I'm gonna fix the script. Uh, I'll show you how that works, how that scripting works later. Uh, which is just as well, because I really don't want to spend a lot of time running to healing points and things like that. Uh, this is a no-heal area, obviously. Okay, and here we are. You're going to see that little saw thing again. That's the place where, once I get the script working, the uh, bad guys will spawn. This little cabin in here. There it is. spawn here, but obviously, like I said, I don't want to deal with that right now, so let's go. Uh... You come in here, there's going to be some thugs, they're going to attack you. You hear the sound of the fireplace. The fireplace is a placeable object, and so is the sound. That is something else I will show you how to do tonight. Talking about this is a trap door that goes down to the basement. There are two ways to do this. Uh, the, the, the way I'm using here is simply just creating an area transmission, which is something we've already talked about. There is a way to script the trap door itself and use that as an area transition. Before, you know, when we get to part four, we're talking about scripting and more advanced functions. I will show you how to do that. So we will remove these area transitions and we will replace them. We will replace them with uh, scripted teleports. This door is going to be locked. Oh no, I can't get in. Okay. Search the house. Here. Jeez. This is something we're going to talk about tonight, actually, is how to create locked doors and keys. Okay. Uh, now I've got the key. I can open it up. Here's the family being held prisoner in their own cellar. Okay. Oh, the bandits, the bodies climbing from the earth. Oh, 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 we'll chat with them for a while. Again, we'll talk about conversations a little tonight. We'll show you how to make some conversations. I'm not going to make you sit and watch me even though I'm like each and every conversation, but I will show you how, they, how they're made and how they work and how you can use them to set variables on the modules, the areas, and the character. Okay, so that's the... Uh, by the way, that little shack there is a rest area. Players will be able to go there and, and rest. And there's going to be random encounters through here. Animals will climb out of the ground and try to kill us. Yes, there is a stream here. No, it doesn't go anywhere. It's actually the same stream. Okay, a skeleton just spawned somewhere near me. But here's the camp. This is the bandit camp. Uh, this will be a big fight. There's going to be a lot of bandits here and a lot of treasure. I'll show you how to set up both of those uh, when we do part three and we start talking about setting up adventures and enemies and things. Uh, this is an entrance to a dungeon. The dungeon is not built yet and it won't be. We're going to talk about that in part four. Uh, we're going to show you how to install a hack which you uh basically i don't like the dungeon tile sets that come as, as as part of the vanilla game they're okay but they're just okay and i there's a really good one that i want to use called classic dungeons which is available 
on uh, neverwintervault.org. Uh, and I intend to use that one. And so in order to use that one, I have to download it and install it into the game as a hack. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I guess I've done enough showing you around. These are the areas of the map that I have made. Uh, let's go now back into the tool set and we will talk a little about how to detail areas, uh, how to add uh, um, um, aesthetic and, uh, and essential details like conversations uh, and things like that. So, and just like magic, we're back in the tool set. So, uh, let's start by showing you that little trick with the opening and closing of the doors. Now, I remember telling you before that I didn't want to put a door here, but why not a curtain? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Universal Doors, and we're going to go to Other, and there's a cloth door. Okay? By the way, there's a lot of variation on these cloth doors. So instead of a door to the kitchen, there's going to be a curtain. But they're not going to keep the curtain closed because that would only get in their way while they're hustle, hustling food back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and we're going to select initial state opened. Okay. And that, that generally, that just opens the, opens the door. And you can do that with any door, just initial state, open, close. A lot of other uh, placeables will have different types of initial state. For example, the candelabra in the initial state might be lit or not lit. Okay. So there's, there's other uh, initial states available. So that's one way to do little details. Let's move on to something a little more interesting. Uh, I told you before we were going to put some some boxes and barrels here in the storage room, and I didn't do it because there's more to it than just placing the boxes and barrels. So we're going to do that now. We're going to go to uh, placeables, standard, containers and switches, barrel. Okay. Now here's the problem with this. Okay, the barrel has a script attached to it. We go into properties, scripts, and it has a general low, general low. That, that means that this barrel contains treasure. Well, I love the players and all, but they're not going to find potions and money just lying around at the local inn. No treasure for you. So there's two ways we can do it. We can either delete these scripts, but that would turn these into containers, and I don't want the players just storing stuff either. So rather than using them as a container, you see where it says usable has inventory? I'm going to uncheck usable and click static. This is going to turn this barrel into a static item. Okay. Now I'm going to select it, copy, control C, and I'm going to paste, control V, and place another barrel. Control V, place another barrel, control V, place another barrel, control V, control V, select them all, hit the random directions so they're not all facing the same way because that looks silly. Good. And now I'm going to organize them so they look a little more, oh, look at that, that's sitting on top of the light. So they look a little more organically placed. So sometimes getting things into the corners can be tricky because there's actually a collision set up in the walls. Not all the, to keep the player, the characters from clipping. The collision is set a little outside the actual wall. Now you can force items through those collision through that collision mesh, but sometimes you have to fiddle with the angles a little bit to do it. And now just to be clever, I think I'm going to toss one barrel in the back, kind of on top of the other barrels. Bada boom. Okay, so go to adjust location and we'll put the Z axis up to 0.5 should come pretty close uh, because my caps lock my number lock is off. Well, now let's try it. 0.5. Oh, that's not even close. Okay, so we'll go to one. Apply. That's actually pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and say okay. 
see if it bears close examination. It's a little too high. Let's zoom in real close so we can see it. Just location, 0.7, apply, 0.8, apply, 0.9, apply, 0.85 should do it. Yeah, that's good enough. No player's ever going to notice any clipping that's going on there. Okay, so there's a there's a, just gives gives the thing place a little bit of a three dimensional kind of look to it. Sometimes you can just place objects on top of each other and they'll automatically float on top of the new the other object. You saw me do that in the kitchen with the bread, but it just it doesn't always work. So we're going to place some crates as well. Probably want larger crates for the bottom. There. Give me one nice, got another one. Give me one nice big crate. There's a nice big crate right there. Okay, we'll make that one static. Whoops, don't hit cancel. And I'll put two slightly smaller, like medium size ish crates. A couple of smaller crates. Let's pop one right on top of this crate. And that'll do it. Okay. Now, another thing I want to do is I want to put some containers into the in rooms and make sure that the doors are locked and assigned key numbers. And I'm going to show you how to make keys. Okay. So we're going to take, uh, really, I don't think this is a fancy type of place. It's not going to have anything really amazing in the rooms. What do we have already in here? Bookshelf. Yeah, one thing I never liked about these games is the way they put bookshelves full of books. And medieval books were worth a lot of money. Anyway, uh, let's put an armoire in here. Because there's already a chest of drawers. So we'll put in an armoire. Put it up against the back wall. Oops. Adjust location to... 90 degrees, butt it up against the wall, bada boom, okay, and then we're going to go to properties. Now, usable simply means that the item can be interacted with. Some items are going to be usable so you can script them. Has inventory. That means if you use it, it'll automatically click you into the item's inventory, and you can use this item as a container. We're going to leave that as is. Now, this particular item does come with treasure scripts attached. We're just going to remove the treasure scripts. And this now becomes a plain container with nothing in it. Players can now store their stuff in here once they get their hands on a key. What we're going to do is we're going to go Properties on the door. And we're going to go to lock. We're going to say door is locked. We're going to say key required to lock or unlock. Uh, this way, the uh, this way the player can't just bash down the door and use the container. It's kind of cheap, but you know how innkeepers are about you bashing down their doors, and it works. 
So we're going to call this uh, room two key. Well, let's say in room two key. Okay. Properties. We're going to have more than one room available in case the place go in case the players go multiplayer. Okay. So we'll call this door locked. Key required. This will be room one in room one key. Control C to copy. Then we'll call this room three. This will be now we need to make the keys and put them in our palette so that we can have the innkeeper hand them out uh, when they hit the right conversation node. For that, we're going to use the area wizard. Oh, area wizard, the cinnamon force of habit, the item wizard. Okay, and we're going to create a key. And next, and we're going to call this key the in room one key. This is not a magical item, no levels, no item qualities. Then we are going to place it in the key palette category. So that's under uh, miscellaneous. Thought there was a key area, maybe not. No, nope, I guess not. So I guess we'll just have to put this under, I guess it fits best under other. Next. Now we're going to launch the item properties. Go to the appearance. Now we can fiddle with the appearance. You can change the colors, right? You can change the top, middle, and bottom. Right, uh, we're just going to make this a very generic key. We're just going to leave it so straight ones. Checking the properties. Okay, so what we need to be sure of that hasn't changed is the tag in room one key and the blueprint res ref in room one key. Okay, so that's going to be our room one key okay then we're going to edit a copy and this is going to be the room two key Change the res ref to, and then we are going to chain, make another copy, and we are going to call this the room three key. Change the name, change the tag, change the res ref. Boom. Okay. There's the three keys. These are the keys that we could just drop one on the floor. Boom. Okay. But we're going to 
to delete that. Uh, well, the players are going to have to get that from the from the innkeeper in a conversation. So maybe that's the next thing we should do is set the innkeeper up with a basic conversation. What we're going to do is we're going to give the innkeeper a couple of main notes. Uh, they, the players can either ask them about a room or they can open the shopkeeper. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to this fellow here and we are going to create a conversation. First thing I want to do is give the conversation a name besides untitled 000. We're going to do, do that using save as. We'll call this innkeeper conversation one. And I just always number everything because I don't know. I just wind up going through multiple versions of everything anyway. And we're going to create a route. This is going to be how the speaker is going to greet the uh, the person speaking. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the NPC greeting. Oh. Hello. And now we're going to enter. I'm going to pull that up so we can do it in the text monitor. It's going to say, well, hello. And we're going to put in a token. First name. So he'll say, hello, first name. Hope your stay here has been pleasant. How can I help you today? Now, the player can either say, have you got any goods to sell? Or the player can say, I think I would like to rent a room. Now, if you say, have you got any goods to sell, this will open a shop. If you say, I would think I would like to rent a room, then this will open the opportunity to buy a key. Now, this gets a little tricky because we're going to have to use variables set on the area to determine whether or not a room has already been rented. So in order to do that, we're going to have to stretch the, uh, the uh, scripting wizard. We're going to have to make some manual modifications to the scripting wizard. Now, if you're, if you're writing for a single-player module, you wouldn't have to do that. Uh, but let's face it, my whole thing is about multiplayer. And that's one thing that the basic wizards don't support. So that's one thing I'm going to have to show you how to do, is how to change the variables. Uh, the variables in this game are set are placed on items. Uh, so I'm going to have to show you how, uh, by default, when you use a wizard, the variables are always set on the player character that's in the middle of the conversation. That's not always going to work uh, for this system. So I'm going to show you how to make that one minor change to variables so that they're set on other items rather than just the player. Because if you set the key, the, the variable on the player, uh, that the key, uh, room one has already been rented, and then another player comes along and wants to rent it, 
it's going to check for the variable on the player and it's not there, they're going to say, okay, here you go, you can rent it too. And then you'll have two players who've rented the same room. So instead, we're going to place those variables on the area, on the in itself. Uh, that way, when somebody comes back and says, I want to rent room two, he's going to be like, I'm sorry, room two's already been rented. You can't have it. Okay, uh, that's called, that's done using a uh, uh, one of the, this this text appears when uh, uh, section down here. I'll I'll show you how the starting conditionals. I'll show you I'll show you how those work. So first thing he says is, I think I would like to rent a room. And the uh, NPC, the innkeeper, is going to say, "Splendid." I have plenty of space. The roads have become very dangerous since the watch at Neverwinter has scaled back their patrols. Guests these days are few and far between. Merchant rooms and one noble room. Open or if you wish. Welcome to continue to sleep in the commons room. Okay. Now the player can say, I would like Room one a merchant room, please. And then it will say pay five. Gold pieces. That might seem a little pricey, five gold pieces for a room for a night, but you, once the player rents this room, they're going to have access to it for the remainder of the adventure. So let's be honest, that's fair. Now we're going to save this, and then we're going to take pay five gold pieces, and we're going to make that an action. And we're going to, oops, my bad, start action, pay five gold pieces, and then we're going to say end action. So we're going to end the start feature. There's three start features. There's start action, start check, start highlight. Action means you're doing something during the dialogue node. Start check would be something like a perception check or some other skill check. And then highlight simply highlights materials you might be describing the character that you're talking about and rather than uh, you know rather than just using regular text you use the highlight to kind of separate it but they all end the same way and start okay so this pay five gold pieces will come up in green oh and there's a it's just a it's just a dialogue convention in neverwinter nights where you throw this kind of thing into brackets boom and then we save. 
Now, the next thing we have to talk about is the scripting. Scripting is a little more complicated, uh, and we're going to try to show you some quick and dirty tricks for creating a multiplayer script, which is a little more trickier than just using the script wizard. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the script wizard. So that's here. It's already open. There's already a script on there. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write this script. I probably have written this script like three times already. Uh, but this is a starting conditional script. This determines whether or not the node appears. We're going to check for gold. The character has to have at least five gold pieces for the script to run. And we're also going to check for a local variable. And it's going to be an integer variable, and the integer variable is going to be called uh, in room one rented. <coughs> and that room, that integer variable has to equal zero. Needless to say, all variables are set to zero by default until you manually set them to something else. So. And that's it. I said OK and more, but I didn't really mean it. So we're going to take this whole script, copy it, Control C, and we're going to go into. Whoops. Well, saving's good. Saving's never. Saving never hurts. We're going to go into the script editor. We're going to copy. We're going to paste the whole thing in here. Kaboom! Like that. Okay. Now, there's one problem with this script. Get local int OPC in, in room rented equals zero return false. What that does is if the if the variable in room one rented it, it does not equal zero on the player that's talking, then the node won't appear. The problem is the player talking isn't the problem. There's a whole module running here. So instead of putting that variable on the player character, what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the innkeeper. Now, the innkeeper is the owner of the script, so this is easy to do. We're just going to say, instead of OPC, we're going to say object underscore self, and that attributes the integer variable to the object that, the, that owns the script, in this case, the innkeeper. So, what it's going to do, instead of checking the PC for the variable, it's going to check the innkeeper for the variable. Now, what this means is that when we set the script later to actually uh, to actually set that variable, that the, in has, that the in room has been rented and the key has been given out, well, this has to, uh, we have to remember to switch it from the PC to the object self, because all of these script wizards always default to setting variables on the player character. That works fine if you're doing a single player adventure, but I design modules for use by groups uh, for, for, for use in campaign play. And that means that certain integer, certain variables are gonna have to be set either on the object that's speaking them or even sometimes on the module itself. You can actually, uh, object OPC. Instead, you could say object OMOD equals get module, and that will set the piece that will set the variable on the module itself. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and set it on the innkeeper. Uh, now, watch this not compile, and I've got egg all over my face. So, we're going to call this one uh, in. SC, oh, I've already, I've already printed this one out once. Uh, so SC for starting conditional, conditional room one, save, and please compile. Good, okay, it compiled. Uh, that means there's no problem with the script. Uh, it understood. So, save, exit. Okay, now making the next two rooms is going to be easy because we're just going to copy and paste. So copy. Paste. And then we're going to paste it again. Okay, and now we're going to 
have to alter the script a little bit. So we're going to edit the script and we're going to change in room one rented to in room two rented. And we're going to save as in starting conditional room two. Save. Boom. Okay. And then we're going to actually have to change the dialogue. I would like room two. A merchant room, please. And now we're going to change this last dialogue mode. I would like room three. And this is the noble room. And we're going to edit. We're going to save as. We're going to switch it to three. And save. And then we're going to switch the variable to in room three rented. And save. I'm just going to grab this and pop it in a note file because we're going to need that in just a second when we make the next script that hand out the keys. So file save and exit and save. Now the next thing we need to do is an action taken script. Okay, so if the player selects this dialogue node, then the following action will be taken. In this case, the, uh, the player is going to receive the key and they're going to have set that variable on the merchant that the key has been rented. So let me grab my notepad file here, which I use for just scrawling notes as I as I design. The variable is going to be called in room rented and then the, the room number. And what we're going to do is we're also going to hop in and get the res ref for the key. So we're going to save the conversation, close it up. We're going to go to the item there they are, items, custom, and I believe we put it under miscellaneous, other, yep. <clears throat> we are going to grab the res ref, the blueprint res ref, copy, and we're going to throw that into our little note pad file as well, because we're about to use that. Okay. Now it's time to write the script. So we're going to write a regular script. Clear for new script. Whoops. Do that again. Clear for new script. And we're going to do a normal script called from a conversation. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to take items, XP, gold from the PC. Script, we're going to take one, two, three, four, five gold from the PC. And then we're going to set a local variable. We're going to set the local integer. In room one rented, well, let's change that to a one. Two, one. Oh, uh, Sorry, I gotta click this button to make sure that it knows that I'm setting the local integer. Okay. I'll close. Oh, I dropped it. Hang on, there it is. So we're gonna go 
copy. And then we got to get back into this guy's conversation. And these little, this, these little arrows here will open up the dialogue trees. Okay, so we're going to go to Actions Taken. Hit the Edit button. Control A to select all. Control V to paste. And now, again, we have to set the local int. Instead of OPC, we're going to set the local int on object underscore self. And that will place the variable on the innkeeper instead of on the player character. We're going to save this as in give room one key. That barely fits. I guarantee I that wouldn't have given me many more letters. And save. Boom. Compiled successfully. Exit. Okay. We need a little more copy and pasting here to do the next two rooms. We made a mistake. We forgot it. Whoops. Let's go ahead and save the changes there. We're going to modify these scripts instead of writing new ones. But we forgot to actually give the players the keys. I forgot to actually give the players the keys. So that's actually a fairly easy thing to add to the script. Give items to players, script, resref of item to give is in room one key. Not sure why that keeps dropping like that. Okay, so create item on object in room one key OPC, copy. And actions taken. We also have to change this to object set local int object self. Underscore self. Spelling's a big deal when you're scripting, just letting you know that. Save, bingo, and exit. Okay, that should work. Uh, we'll test it out uh, in a moment. There's one other little detail that I'd like to show you. Uh, remember that fireplace that we saw in the inn that was crackling away? I have to remember to turn the volume down on that. It was a little too loud. But I want to show you how to place that. I want to show you how to use those sound placeables. So I'm going to go ahead and save this script. This, by the way, is adequate. You can add to it, and I'll show you how to add to it sometime. Or, uh, but for, ten, for purposes of tonight, I think this is adequate. Oh, except for one little detail. Uh, have you any goods to sell? Yeah. Uh, what we need to do, let's go ahead and save this and close it, is we need to place a shop. Here they are, merchants. Okay. I don't like these merchants, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom merchant down the road. But for just for purposes of today, I'm going to throw down a general store. Okay, and I'm going to rename it. in underscore shop okay now i'll show you what's in here this is the inventory button and it's going to take a minute to load because this uh, shop is probably a little better equipped than one might normally want 
Huh, not bad. Okay, that's the armor that's available. Here's the weapons that they sell. This is actually a pretty reasonable shop for the inn. I mean, uh, a lot of potions. Probably wouldn't have quite so many potions. Rings and amulets. Yeah, okay, see, I'm going to have to pull some stuff out of here. So, let's see. Uh, rings, these are gl magical glowing rings. We're going to get rid of those. Ring of Insight. No, not at the local. You're not finding that at the local inn. Uh, natural armor amulet. Scarab of protection. Yeah, this is all stuff. Copper necklace, silver. This stuff is okay. We'll leave the rings in there. Not, not that anyone would ever buy them, but we'll go ahead and leave those in there. Now for potions. We're not having potions of aid. Potion of Antidote, okay, we'll have one of those. Uh, Potion of Bark Skin, we'll have one of those. I'm unclicking Infinite, okay? Potion of Bless, uh, we had one last week, but some guy bought it. Potion of Cure Light Wounds, yeah, we're not going to be stingy. We'll have Potions of Cure Light Wounds available here, but not the only one Cure Moderate, only one Cure Moderate Wounds and no Cure Serious Wounds. No cure critical wounds and no potions of healing. So there's our potion selection here at the end. He's got a couple, but not a lot. Uh, rings and amulets, miscellaneous. He's got torches, healer's kits. One thieves tool. He does have one thieves tool. He does not have any magic pouches. Those he does not have. And this is actually a... Uh, an official Neverwinter Nights module shop. So these are actually, for the OC, just specialized maps that would be used to uncover mapping systems in the OC. So we're going to pull those out too. So he's got basic armor up to and including... Huh, no, he does not carry half plate. He has one suit of banded mail. He does not have splint mail. And he has one suit of scale mail. He does. And no chain. How odd is that? Let's give two suits of chain mail. That's just odd that that would not be in there. Okay. So we're going to go to armor, medium armor, chain mail. And we're going to put two suits of chain mail in his selection. Okay. Uh, and how about uh, one uh, light armor chain shirt? Okay, so he has a little chain mail too. Okay, it's all rusted up and stuff. Uh, he has one large shield, one tower shield, and as many bucklers as you want to buy. So, so that's that would be small shields, and that is a shop. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the tag here in shop, copy, control C, close. And now we're going to create properties and conversation. There's a couple of ways to get into the conversation. And we're going to say, have you got any goods to sell? And the reply is going to be, of course, of course, take a look, of course. Of course. Take a look. Dot, dot, dot. And then, and you know, we are going to use the cheese wizard for this because this is really quite simple. We're going to perform an action, start a merchant. With the script tag, control in shop, use appraise checks, that's a player skill. And next, and we'll call this one in underscore shop open. Finish, and all that, that's it.
I placed that in the wrong spot. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to put it in this node, otherwise it's not going to open properly. There we go. Good. Save. Okay, now obviously that's not complete, uh, but uh, it, it's ad it's adequate to the job, right? The, the innkeeper will do his innkeeper thing. He'll sell you stuff and he'll sell you keys to rooms. Close. Close. One thing I forgot to do. I was working on the the rooms. Copy. Paste, plop, excuse me, and we're going to pop that up against the wall there. Okay, so now both rooms have containers. I know it's a little lame. Um, so, oh, and there's, this guy's going to need a container in his room too. Let's give him two containers, okay? So we're gonna give the nice room here two containers, drop, plop, spin, oh, the other way. And we'll put another one here. <clears throat> Tell you what, we'll put it at the foot of the bed. Open the properties, change the name to chest. Don't really have to fiddle with the tag and stuff because we're not going to be spawning these things around. But we are going to change the appearance to chest two, chest three, chest three. Boom. Okay, so now he's got a chest and an armoire in his room. Save. Okay. Now, how to place a sound effect. That's actually ridiculously easy. We're going to go to a different area. We're going to go to the Western Road, and we're going to go to the waterfall on the west side of the map. We are going to add a placeable sound effect from nature called Waterfall over edge. Oh, we'll use small because we're at the top here. Boom. Sound effect. Now you can go nuts with the sound effects. Trust me, I've gone completely overboard with them. Yeah, you know, like lapping water all the way down the lake and all the way down the uh, the stream and, and in the and in the lower lake river here players aren't going to notice that much though so you don't have to go that bonkers and if you use too many sound effects it detracts from the ones you use so don't and i guess that would do for advanced functions uh except of course for uh questing which is the last thing we're going to do tonight to do that, we're going to return to the end. So here we are. Uh, we're going to put our questers over here in this little corner right here. There's going to be two people there. Maybe we'll throw some more in just as set dressing later, but there's two that are going to matter. The first is going to be a fop, a nobleman. So let's go ahead and grab him from creatures, NPCs, humans. Oops. I want to get out of a custom palette. Monsters, NPCs, humans. And we're going to go to humans, humanoids, humans, humanoids. Same difference, right? 
going to see human. So we're going to go to mobile. Okay. Boom. There's Lord stuck up his butt right now. And he's going to have with him uh, a non-player character. It's going to be a dwarf. So let's go ahead. Now here's the deal. This dwarf is going to be a henchman. This is going to be a character that can follow you around and help you. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, we can't just use a model for a henchman. We actually have to create a dynamic creature. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to... The creature wizard. And we're going to create a dwarf and we're going to make him a fighter but you know what I want him to be a little more helpful so we're actually going to make him second level you're first he's second I know technically that's not a henchman but he is going to be assigned to help us by the nobleman the problem of course being that he's not very smart so the nobleman's going to put you in charge. He's going to hire you as a guide. So what we're going to do male dwarf, select portrait. It doesn't really matter which portrait we select. I know that guy. Uh, none of these guys look suitably dumb. I want someone who looks kind of dumb. Oh, well. Let me choose this guy. Okay, and then we're going to go next. We're going to set him up for now with the commoner faction. And... Random name. Find a decent one. Bognar. I like that. And his last name will be... It's a terrible name. Ironfort. Okay. Bognar Ironfort. Okay. And again, we'll be able to change this down the road. Uh, monsters, NPCs. We'll put him under... It's asking me what palette I want to put them under. We're going to put them under NPCs, Dwarves. Next. And there's his stats. I'm going to cut his intelligence down a few points. Because I'm mean. Okay. There's all his stats. Skills. Feats. Special abilities. And, of course, his script set, which we're going to have to change to a Henchy script set. But we'll talk about that in a minute, too. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and launch his creature properties. Well, grab a head that more closely... Oh, cut his head off. Sorry. Um, resembles the... Uh, whoops. More clo closely resembles the profile now. Uh, the profile pick. Unfortunately, one thing that Neverwinter Nights was not big on was creating big full beards. That's not bad. Yeah, okay, so we'll use that one. And let's go ahead and set him up with some slightly better armor. Armor, medium. And let's do scale mail. So he'll start out with a torch, short sword. Yeah, short sword, he might as well carry a shield too. So let's go to helmets. Gotta give the guy a helmet, right? Uh, you know what? No, let's not. Let's not, because it'll cover up his face and reduce me. Small shield. How about just a shield? Yeah, 
just a plain old shield. Okay, it's not going to let me mess with that. Okay, so there's our there's our dwarf. Okay, that's the worst looking scale mail ever. We will talk later about the community expansion pack and the graphical improvements. Uh, one of the graphical improvements in the community expansion pack is a full set of halber halberts, uh, which would include scale mail, chain mail, uh, 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 half plate armor, that kind of thing. Uh, way better, way better graphics. But, you know, this will do for now. So, there's our guy. Now, one thing we do need to do, this guy's going to be a henchy. Okay, so right now there's a script set on here. Uh, this is a standard uh, NPC script set. This is just scripts for some guy who's going to be wandering around, just not paying, just not important in any way, shape, or form. That's not the script set that we want. What we want to do is we're going to go into Load Script Set, and we're going to grab one of the Henchy script sets, and we're going to select one of the Henchies. Uh, there's XP1 and XP2. Those are Expansion Pack 1 Expansion Pack 2. We're going to select Expansion Pack 2, so you know, you know what? This is not a full-fledged henchy. Hmm, I'm not sure. For now, we'll select two. We can always change it later if we want to. Okay, and that changes all the scripts. So now this is uh, uh, going to save script set. No, don't need the script set. Everything's done. Just got to click OK. Now, we're going to place him here. Boom. There's our... There's our quest givers. Now, let's be honest here. Down the road, what I'm probably going to do is put in a placeable chair that he can sit on, and so I can have Lord Fauntleroy here sitting in a chair when you approach him, and uh, Bognar standing here behind him. And you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to show you how to do something important. Sometimes you're going to want to make changes. Now, this is I'm just doing this to be silly here because uh, this is not something you would do if you only had one creature placed on the board that you wanted to change. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a change to Bognar here in the palette. This section here is called the palette, uh, and I'm going to export it onto the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to statistics, and I'm going to reduce his intelligence two points. Boom. Uh, make it three. He's really stupid. Uh, but in exchange, I'll give him an extra point of wisdom. Uh, no, I want him to stay pretty stupid. Uh, here, give him some extra strength. Boom, there. That'll make him a little more formidable in combat. So, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And always hit, hit that save button because I tell you what, this is very unstable. Anyway, moving on. We are going to we're going to uh, open up what's called the journal editor. Basically, it's the quest editor. Okay. We're going to add our first category. And we'll call this the missing carters. And we'll give it a tag, which in order to keep things quite simple. We will also call the missing carters. And this is going to be our highest priority quest. This is our main quest. Every time we put in side quests, they'll have lower priority. And it asks for an experience point value. That's basically a milestone value for having completed the quest. Uh, we'll give it, a, say, 500 gold, 500 experience points. We're going to put in our first node. This is our first entry, and our first entry is going to be, I have been approached by a local noble nobleman, so I'm spelling it right, who wants me to track down several miss 
saying that. Carter, who were delivering goods for the village merchant in a nearby town. He has lent me the service, uh, the help, of one one of his able guards. A capable, if somewhat dim, fighter in his service. Okay, and that'll be our first quest entry. Now, how do we get there from here? First, we have to give a. Uh, first, we have to give a. Uh, name to our nobleman. Okay, and we'll call him Lord. Lord Denny? Yeah, let's not use Lord Denny. Lord Corey is a much better. Lord Raman? That's pretty silly. Lord Garrick? That works. Very tricky. Okay. And save. Boom. Okay. Now we give him a conversation. Now, those conversations can be pretty extraordinary. Uh, there's lots of little tricks and tricks. We can do backstories and chit-chat and idle conversation and buy each other drinks, all that stuff. Let's do that later. Let's just make a working quest right now. And if you want to, when you're doing your own stuff, when you wanna, if you want to get creative with conversations and do fancy things, you certainly can do that. Uh, but for now, let's just make this quest work. So he's going to say, Greetings, peasant. Oh, pardon me. Greetings, peasant. Might I trouble you for your ear just a moment? It may profit you to hear me out. Okay? And that's his greeting to the player. The players walk up, they initiate the conversation, that's his greeting. To which the players may say, certainly. My lord. Please tell me how I might serve you. So that would be more of a proper answer to a lord speaking to a peasant. Oops. Let's go ahead and do a quick copy here. Control, copy. And let's just go ahead and delete that node. 
Okay, you want to you want to put your you want to highlight the the conversation that's being spoken and then click add, paste. Okay, and that'll create the next line down. Okay, so another possibility that the player might say is going to be. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's just make it simple. And what exactly do you want? Cheeky. Okay, and lastly, he might say, not just now, no. And that will end the conversation. That will end this, this. This choice will end the dialogue. Now, it won't matter which of these two choices the player selects. Uh, the same conversation is going to occur. This will give me a chance to show you how to uh, paste a node as a link, which is a very important part of setting up conversations in this tool. So he will explain to you how my good servant, the merchant of my village, a tenant both responsible and true has lost not less than three carts passing beyond this inn and onto the western road. My servant Bognar and I are hoping to recruit a strong young local such as yourself to help us find out what has been befalling my loyal carters. I will gladly pay you some 300 gold pieces if you can bring me evidence of what has happened. Five hundred. If you can find and rescue and return to me, my loyal subjects. Will you help? Okay. And boom. So that's going to be the response. Now, what I'd like to show you how to do is how to uh, how to 
basically link, uh, create, uh, paste this as a link to here, okay? That way we don't have to rewrite the same threads over and over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this as a link. Copy, and then we're going to go down here, and we're going to paste as link. And as you can see, this is going to come up gray, okay? What that means is that instead of creating a separate thread, anytime the conversation reaches this node, it's going to jump up here and start right there, okay? This way we can basically give the players the illusion of having made a choice without having to give them so many choices that we are writing every single thread over and over and over again. This also comes in very handy when it comes to backtracking conversations. Uh, you're going to have sections where they're going to be asking questions, and we're going to, I'm, I'm going to do one of those. I'm not going to make you watch, but I'm going to do one of those down by the waterfront when they're questioning a witness. And that's going to require a lot of these pasted links uh, in order to make that a writable conversation uh, without literally having to fill hundreds of notes. Uh, so we really want to keep that down to 20 nodes in one conversation is a lot, okay? So let's polish this quest off. The players can either say, of course, I would be happy to help. Or I could say, not just now. Thank you. In which case, the next time we come and talk to him again, it'll default right back to the beginning of the conversation, and we can continue to go. But if he accepts, then what's going to happen is there's going to be an action taken, a variable set on the module to let you know, to let us know that the, the job has been taken and we are going to set that variable on the module. Uh, and that will also turn over the uh, Bognar character over as a henchman. And we're going to do all that with a script, with the script wizard that we introduced you to earlier. So, of course, I would be happy to help. Splendid, my dear. Well, probably should throw a comma in there because he's a nobleman and he speaks with Oxford commas. And we'll use a token here because you've earned a little bit of his respect. My dear lad or lass depending on the sex, oops, copy, control C, and paste. I knew I would find a brave young yeoman on the road to help. Allow me to introduce Bognar, my loyal servant. Bognar is strong and quick. A capable soldier. But not the smartest, the sharpest sword on the rack. If you take my meaning. I 
shall ask you to lead him into the woods with some care for he seems to have little for himself. At this point, they're hired. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an actions taken script in here. But we're not going to do that right at the moment. We're going to go ahead and finish out this conversation. Uh, so what's going to happen next is we're going to create another node. And what we're going to do is we're going to have Bognar speak, okay? And Bognar is going to, oops, wait a minute, let me go ahead and switch that back to, there we go. We're going to have Bognar speak. So what we're going to do is going to throw in a continue marker here so that the players can read the section. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and use a start highlight command. Uh, stop doing that. It's quicker to just go. Because I always make mistakes. I always wind up spelling something wrong and messing it up. So we're going to go start highlight. We're going to go and start. And this will just be a continue button. Good. And now we're going to have Bognar say, well, oh, hang on. Uh, Right. Just remember who's in charge here. Okay. Now this is going to give me a hard time because I went too far back. Where the hell is Bogdan? There he is. Okay. Now we're going to throw in another continue. Copy. And paste. To which... That's good, to which Lord Garrick is going to say, of course, of course, of course, Bogdan. You are in charge. Provided you do everything our young guide here tells you to do. Do you understand? Okay, we're getting a little wordy here, so let's end this little, uh, let's end this little, uh, chit-chat between these two. They'll just say, you can count on me. That was supposed to be that. I hate typing in front of people. It makes me very self-conscious. I thought about doing this all out ahead of time. I probably should have. The simple truth is that's not how I do this. So.
Uh, let's give that an exclamation point. And the script owner will say, excellent. I shall see to it. You too are well rewarded for your loyalty. Now off you go. Don't let me hear about you giving our young guide here any problems. And that will end the conversation. Okay, now at any point after you are hired, you can still end the conversation, but that's just a kind of a, I don't know, fun little moment with the NPCs. Now let's go ahead and build the script that starts the quest and, uh, and sets the variables and creates Bognar as a henchman. And to do that, we are going to use the Neverwinter Nights generator. The script wizard can't do this. Oh, for heaven's sake. <clears throat> it's only a 12-year-old uh, piece of software. Of course, it doesn't have the valid ID. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the node here, okay? Hmm. Here would probably be the best place to do it. As soon as you say yes, the answer is yes, okay? And we're going to do actions taken. This is going to be a normal script called from the conversation. The first thing we're going to do is set a local variable. Set the local string. Carter. Quest. Oh, don't use spaces and strings. Boy, that will mess you up. Carter quest start. No, let's just use Carter quest as kind of my running. I mean, we'll probably wind up. Uh, we don't want to use a string. We want to use an integer. My bad. Set the local integer. Carter quest to one. Okay. Uh, then we are going to add a journal entry. Uh, the tag of the journal entry. I forgot what the tag was. We're going to have to go in and, and just fix that after. I think it was called Carter Quest. Rats. So I should have dotted it down. Okay, I'm just going to call it X. It'll be easy to find and we can replace it later. Okay. And lastly, we're going to create a setup. 
placement. Add the creature with this tag as the PC's henchman, and the tag we're going to use is going to be Bognar. Okay, we're just going to use his first name as his tag, which I think is the default anyway. Okay. And close. Okay, yeah, that's a short script. That's shorter than I was expecting. So we're going to copy that. And then we're going to place that under Actions Taken. And we're going to make a modification here. Okay. Uh, set int local OPC Carter Quest 1. Okay, here's a problem with that. Well, this needs to be a more universal. So what we're going to do is we're going to say get module and what that should do, provided it I did it right. I, I might have to make I might have to make a formal object out of it. C is not my specialty. Let's see if it compiles. We will call this uh, quest. Started. Save. Huh. Okay. So I don't have to make a formal object out of it. That's cool. So what that's going to do is that's going to set the variable on the module itself. Uh, what that means is that rather than uh, setting it on the PC, in case there's multiple players, because again, I'm all about multiplayer campaigns, uh, instead of setting it on the player so that another player comes along and has the same spiel, and then Bognar bounces around from player to player as henchmen, uh, what this means is that whoever speaks to this character first is the one who's going to get the henchman, and everyone else is just going to tag along beside. So, uh, it'll also uh, will give us a, an ability to, uh, to determine if this conversation's already been had, because once this conversation's been had, I want a different conversation to start. So, that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up a notepad file here so I can start taking notes, because uh, this is something I really should have done. Set local int, get module, Carter Quest 1. I'm just going to jot that down in here, and that'll tell us, that'll remind me what the, what the actual uh, uh, what the actual variable that's been placed is and where it's been placed. So we're going to exit. And then we're going to hop back in. We're going to say save as Borg Derek save. Okay, and that conversation file has been saved. And this means we can pull it up anytime we want. We're going to go into Journal Editor, Missing Carters. So it's going to be, ah, okay, so I'm going to do it, I'll pull these spaces out of the tag. That's a big deal. Be careful of that. I don't think that's going to work if you leave those like that. So it'll be the missing carters with no spaces for tag. Okay. And it's going to be zero, 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 one, correct? Edit the quest started. Okay, that should work. And 
save. Exit. Now, in order for this guy to actually work, we're going to have to hook him up with a henchman conversation. So what I like to do is just use a generic henchman conversation. You can write a new one, separate one for each of these guys. Uh, fine. Uh, don't recommend it. Ton of work. Don't do it. Uh, what you want to do is you want to add a generic henchman conversation. I'll link to my favorite down below. Whoa, don't do that twice. And we're going to select this, which is my generic henchman script. And we're going to edit it, and we are going to save it as Bognar. Now, this, I don't even remember where I got this script. I feel awful, too, because it's a great script, and I don't know who wrote it. Uh, I've left the name unchanged, MHK, MHK Hench, and I, I just I can't remember where it came from. But whoever wrote it was a damn genius. It was, it's ingeniously dis, uh, designed uh, to be easily modifiable. Now, I'm not going to get too into how the script works, but basically the way it's set up is only the person who has hired this particular henchman can talk to this particular henchman. This script node here, the one on the top, will block anyone else from even speaking to the hired henchman. Uh, so anyone who gets below that, uh, provided he's been hired at all, if he's never been hired at all, it will drop down to the next one. And the next one is, do you want to hire me? And you can hire them or not. Now, we're not going to use either of these two nodes, right? Because, uh, quite frankly, uh, the, uh, the this is a different kind of module, right? This is going to be a multiplayer module. So. Uh, if somebody accepts Bognar as a henchman, uh, then pretty much the whole party should, could, must have the ability to order him around. Or if the character who hires them is killed, and, and ultimately we are going to be installing a permanent death system, then the rest of the party needs to be able to have him follow. So... What we're going to do is we're going to change the way this particular script works. Now, I just happen to know how the script works, so I'll try to show it to you real quick. But what this is, uh, this is the starting conditional here, which basically indicates that the character is uh, hired. Okay, if the character is hired and not by the person speaking, it's going to trigger this node, which simply says, I'm sorry, I serve another, and I have no time to speak with you. Okay? If the character has never been hired, it will be dro it will drop down to here, and it says, uh, greetings, do you have need of a henchman? My fee is a reasonable, and you can modify the, uh, you can modify the script to give it the cost for how much it costs to hire them. If the player says, yes, join me, it triggers this script, which is a, actually a, uh, a very simple actions taken script, re remarkably short, really, which simply assigns this to the player as a henchman. Got it. Now, once those two are, are bypassed, the third script has no starting condition. Okay, anyone reaching this node can uh, basically order the henchmen around. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to delete these top two nodes completely. And we're going to create a new node called, you need to talk to the boss. move that node 
up to the very tippy top because that's how conversations work. Uh, it comes to this top. Oops. Come on up. There it is. Uh, the conversation always defaults to the top and then works down. That's just how this cut works. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our script wizard to create a starting conditional script. Sorry, nothing I can do about that noise. I know how horrible it is. It drives me nuts too. Uh, so we're going to do a, a starting conditional script. Text appears when. Then we're going to check for an integer. Local variable. Integer called, and where's my notepad here? Carter Quest. If the local int Carter Quest equals exactly zero, Return true. So we're going to take this. We're going to put this in the starting conditional for our first node. And what that means is, if he's unhired, he ha he's un he's going to be like, "No, you can't talk to me. You got to talk to the boss." And the boss will hire him out as henchman. But once somebody has been hired out as henchman, uh, then anyone will be able to go through this conversation node with him. Anybody who talks to him, we're just going to assume that everyone on the server is a player in the party that has hired him on, that has been granted his henchman status. So, edit and paste. Okay, that will check to see if any questing has started. We're gonna save that as, we'll call it foggy not hired. Uh, I think I'll mark it as CHK for check. Foggy not hired. Okay. Boom. Compile successfully. And exit. This is an ingenious script. I, I'm not going to go through the details with you. Just Trust me on this. It's a completely automatic. Uh, it only will present these nodes if the character can do it. For example, I need you to cast a spell. Well, Bogner is a fighter. That quest node is not going to, that conversation node is not going to appear because he doesn't have any spells. Uh, let's discuss tactics. How should I behave? Okay. All of these quest nodes will appear. Ah. Uh, Again, down the road, we can make this fancier. We can throw in another conversation node to make him uh, uh, want to discuss maybe personal issues from time to time. We can throw in trigger points along the adventure or create a reputation system inside the conversation that will trigger the character to try to discuss things with the players. This is all well within the possibility of this system. Now, there is one conversation node that we do need to add. Because, uh, like I said, we're going to be applying a permadeath system here. So if the character who is the henchman, the henchman's owner, uh, should die, somebody else has to be, come, be able to come along to this character and say, come with me, and we'll go back to the inn and meet our friend with his new character. So we're going to add a come with me conversation node, which anyone who says that, it'll reassign that person as the, the henchman, the henchman's owner. So what we're going to do is create a new node, and it's going to say just, I want you to follow me.
I want you to follow me from now on. And this will transfer the ownership from whoever owns it. Uh, move it up to the top. Okay. And this will transfer ownership of the uh, of the of the uh, henchman over to the player character. Again, we are going to have to create a script for that. This will be a this will be a normal script. Clear. Normal script. Called from a conversation. Henchmen have other followers. Add the NPC speaker as the PC's henchman. OK. Close. Actions taken. Edit. Paste. Save as. Add Henchy. Boom! This this care this will now anyone who says that character that node hits that node will become the character the henchman's new owner. Yeah, let's go ahead and save that. Done. And done. Okay, so what we've done is we've set up our first our first quest, uh, and now uh, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is actually uh, go go to the West Road, put in encounters, add treasures, and we'll do all that next time around. Oh, voila! It really is pretty simple stuff. Uh, I was stunned. In fact, this game back in what was it, 2002 is what kind of broke me, my fear of modding. Uh, I went back and started modding some older games that I loved very much after I did this. And the older games are harder to mod, but still, a lot of fun. Uh, started working on a Mech Warrior campaign that nobody plays Mech Warrior anymore, but it was fun while it lasted. Uh, so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run through what we've done so far. And if I just debug, because it's like any time you use a computer, you're going to make silly little mistakes. Uh, I'll tell you what I found next time we run a game uh, next week well, before we publish you know, the next adventure. I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick synopsis of some of the mistakes that I found. Uh, and then we'll move on to part three, which is actually creating an adventure out of this, uh, setting up enemies setting up the different types of enemy encounters that you might run into uh, and figuring out how to automate those. Uh, so, yeah. Let's uh, meet, meet you here again next week. Thanks for the view. Like, subscribe, and oh, one other little detail. I got this in the mail. Uh, this is This is going to be my 1,000 subscriber reward. Uh, I did a little poll on Twitter. Most of you watching this uh, discovered me on Twitter. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate y'all coming back and visiting from time to time. Uh, it's not the end goal, but I'm having a great time with this. So, yeah, this if I hit 1,000 subscribers, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my subscriber list, and I'm going to roll some more dice. And... Uh, we are going to uh, give this to one of y'all, uh, like we did with the, uh, the uh, Dungeon Master, the D&D uh, &D Compendium, the Rules Compendium. Uh, when I hit 100, when we hit 1,000, y'all wanted Osric, y'all got Osric. So, again, hit that like button, subscribe, uh, and come back next week, and we will discuss the more advanced functions uh, on how to use the Aurora tool set. But there will be a part four on like how to do super advanced stuff. Uh, but uh, if you can do this much, actually, if you can do as much as we've done in the last two sessions, 
you're in luck. You're you're in. You're done. I mean, you can you can use this tool set now. Go ahead and grab yourself, and there's a link below. Go ahead and grab yourself Carlo One's DM tutorial module and run through it as a dungeon master. It'll teach you everything you need to know to be a dungeon master. I'm not going to get into that because that module teaches you everything you need to know. So there's a download link below. Grab it. Play through that module as a dungeon master using your Neverwinter Nights game. It'll teach you all the tricks. Uh, then download the uh, 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 Dungeon Master Friendly Initiative, the MFI, uh, Dungeon Master Tools, and play with those two because those are awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, we will see you next week. <laughs>